Gina Carano, uh, Disney star, The DeLorean, which I've never watched. Um, the Mandalorian, yeah. The Mandalorian, sorry, not The DeLorean. I was watching Back to the Future. Um, so she put up that now infamous Instagram post, which was widely misrepresented. The post was to the effect that, you know, at first the Nazis, to get people to demonize their neighbors, uh, to, to, you know, to justify atrocities to their neighbors, vilified them and made neighbors fight against neighbors. It, she did not say in that post that Republicans are the modern day Jews in a modern day Nazi Germany. It was more a government getting neighbors to fight among each other as to how you got to Nazi Germany. Could have applied to anybody, the Democrats, Republican equally. She gets, uh, you know, basically fired, canceled. And I don't know, did they, did they like invoke a morality clause? It's not the same thing as Roseanne Barr's um, allegedly racist joke, whatever, where she got canceled, presumably on the basis of a morality clause. But they, 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 they terminate Gina Carano uh, for an, it's not just an innocuous post or, or a, I should say an insightful post. I think Susan Sarandon had some overt comparisons to Nazis and whatever, but they, they, they fired her and she sued. Now this isn't a victory in the sense that she has achieved anything other than she will get her day in court. They made a motion to dismiss and they said, uh, we're all exercising our first amendment rights here. We get to fire people who we don't agree with, even if they don't viol any, violate allegedly any contractual obligation. So she'll get her day in court and they fail. That's the backdrop. Um, so Robert, so they argue we get to exercise our First Amendment rights by firing employees or, or terminating with employees with whom we disagree politically, basically. Yeah, I mean, it goes even further than that. I mean, what happened was uh, the, this was, you know, the 2019-2020. Gina Carano's always already been a successful actress, but becomes one of the most popular actresses on the show Mandalorian, which was the only show that was doing any good by Disney's recreation of Star Wars, which they've mostly butchered and destroyed in the name of woke ideology. So, uh, but this became, this was when you had to pronounce your pronouns. And they were demanding, various people were demanding at Disney that she join the pronoun police, that she needed to say she was she, her, hers. And then if she didn't, that was deeply disturbing to them. They were even mandating that she go to the equivalent of re-education camps to explain to her why she needed to be saying she, her, and hers, why she needed to be celebrating the BLM riots taking place across the country. Because she didn't do that, she but she did go along with other things. I mean, she was willing to sit down and talk to people and discuss it and so on and so forth. But And then finally she's like, okay, I'll, I'll do a droid pronoun thing. That, that enraged them even further. And so they were looking for a pretext to fire her, terminate her, especially because they got in trouble with their, their, their wokeism was killing the brand and their involvement with China was highly controversial. So in order to distract from that, they decide, hey, let's just make an example out of Gina Carano. And it's an example we want, we want to set for all of Hollywood, that we have the right to dictate. You have to believe what we say you believe, not just part of what content we create and put out there, but you have to, when you're off screen, when you're off the job, you have to be endorsing our ideas. You have to be celebrating wokeism. And we will use the power of employment, the power of access to a, your profession and occupation as the condition to, to string you along in that direction. And when they got rid of her, they not only got rid of her, they made a big public deal about it, lied about her in such a way that her agent dropped her, her lawyer dropped her. She couldn't get any, she was going to, to start making millions of dollars a year, it's not making anything. And the it was all because, partially it was because Disney's problems and they just needed a distraction in the news cycle, but it was because Hollywood has chosen to make wokeism a mandatory requirement. It's the same thing that's happening to employees all across the country. It's like the Red Hat lawsuit that I have. They're mm -hmm. requiring everybody on the job and off the job celebrate their ideology. And if you don't, you're going to be sent to re-education camp. And so the defense, so she brought suit because in California, like some other jurisdictions, it is illegal for an employer to discriminate based on your political beliefs. They cannot use the power of employment to coerce you to doing certain things. This is, goes back to the old school liberal, classical liberal that, version of California. Is that under the UNRU Act, Robert? Yes. And there's multiple, it applies in multiple contexts. And they also harassed her. And, and, and the, you could argue there was gender discrimination because they treated her very differently than Pascal. 
the uh, the the lead actor also in Mandalorian who said much more crazier mm-hmm. things politically. The uh, I mean the guy's kind of wacky, uh, but the so uh, but their excuse was that they had a First Amendment right that because they're in the Hollywood business, because they make TV shows, because they make films, they can require there anybody that works with them or for them to toe the ideological line or they can weaponize all of their economic power to crush them and that no other laws that prohibit discrimination can possibly apply to them. They were saying they had a First Amendment right to be totalitarians, First Amendment right to be 1984 advocates. And that, I mean, it was a, I was, I've always been curious how they thought they'd get away with this legally, but it was still a bit shocking Mm -hmm. that they think they have the equal power to what big tech has where they can play editor when they want to and then play non-editor when they want to and be immune either way. Um, That's Section 230. Hollywood doesn't have a Section 230. So they pretended the First Amendment embodied that. And and, uh, the the reason why Gina Carano had competent, capable counsel, given that they tried to deny her any monetary access in anywhere in Hollywood for the, the, the blacklisting, the real blacklisting. I mean, people think that the communists were blacklisted nothing like the way people like gina carano have been blacklisted go back and look a lot of those commie writers could fake a name and get a job and a lot of other commies got jobs without a problem gina carano they completely blacklisted uh because she wouldn't toe the line and they wanted to make an example here's a popular actress on a tv show that made that show successful and will cancel tv shows rather than allow someone to not toe the line because Mm -hmm. these are about ideological indoctrinators they're not about making people money. Uh, they, they lie to their shareholders on a regular basis. They should be sued into oblivion for their consumer and, and fraud on the markets over the last decade. But what they're really into, what they're really about is ideological indoctrination. You can't watch that Olympics presentation and come to any other conclusion. That isn't about entertainment. That isn't about art. That's about indoctrination. Well, but e- even... Even if it were about art, I'm not watching the Olympics for that type of art. It may, may be like spiritual art or unifying art. I'm not watching it for, I, I, I can't even think of a controversial artist type of even art. Maple Thorpe. Uh, is he the guy that stuck the American flag up his butt? Uh, oh, he's the guy that put a Jesus in, in his own urine. Yeah, and I think and he actually. That was art. That's not art. I, that I, might I be think... expression, but it's not art. Let's not, Maple... let's not defame the, the, the aesthetic of art. By pretending Maplethorpe is in it. Now he might be in it from a constitutional protection category, but not from an aesthetic value category. But the federal court came in and said, went through this whole history and said, You're what you're claiming is that you have a First Amendment right to ignore the employment discrimination laws of California. What you're claiming is that your First Amendment rights trump the First Amendment rights of all your employees of everybody who works for you because this wasn't about, and they were using film, they were using lawsuits where the film itself required the discriminatory judgment. In other words, the film itself or the show itself required to be a woman or a man or a black person or a white person or Mexican person or whatever, or have a certain ideological inclination, et cetera. Like that isn't what this is about. You're demanding everybody but the you're, you're claiming something extraordinary that you have the First Amendment power to use your economic power to indoctrinate the world and use your economic power of your employees to force them to be advocates of your it, this ideology. And that's precisely what California law has never allowed and has always prohibited. And the First Amendment has never protected. First Amendment has never gone that far. The First Amendment allows your expressive advocacy. It does not allow your employment discrimination and prejudice. And so it was a massive win for Gina Carano. The the court completely denied every Mm -hmm. aspect of Disney's motion to dismiss, which means they're marching forward to discovery, marching, which I'm sure is going to be very, very interesting. And more importantly, it means the entire legal predicate that they had, that Hollywood had been, had been assuming gave them the green light to behave like big tech towards its own screenwriters and, and actors and actresses and coerce them into ideological ind- indoctrination, that legal template is gone. And everybody who's been discriminated against for political reasons, and there have been many, many, many 
in Hollywood. Remember, all these companies are based in California, California, one way or shape or form. You have a right to sue them now in California. You got the legal precedent to do so. Thanks to Gina Carano. Thanks to Elon Musk, who funded her lawsuit. Mm -hmm. So it's a big, big win for free speech, freedom of thought, freedom of ideas in America, and a big win against the idolaters uh, and the indoctrinators uh, at Disney World. 